Thank God for that guy. <laughs> it's interesting. You know? I just listened to Quentin Tarantino's on a podcasting tour because he's got a new book. He 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 wrote a novel out of the Once Upon a Time in Hollywood characters, and I just started listening to it. It's fantastic. Uh, listen on Audible. And uh, Brian Koppelman from the moment interviewed Quentin. I listened to it yesterday on my bike ride, and he was just talking about how he just never gave up, and he had written True Romance. And then he wrote, um, what was the other one he wrote at that time? Natural Born Killers. Natural Born Killers, yeah. And he was just talking about how the first movie nobody would do. Then he wrote the two screenplays and nobody would do. And then he got to Reservoir Dogs and, you know, they tried to scrape together $800,000. And he kept asking, like, why didn't you quit? Why didn't you quit? He's like, well, you know, I just, I figured it out. Like, I figured out I had a voice and then nobody would buy my scripts because I was trying to do something innovative. And they were reading the scripts, and they didn't understand what I was doing in terms of innovating on how a movie would be with, you know, how he does with Pulp Fiction, he changes the time and tells the storytelling in a non linear fashion. And he's like, nobody understood it. But every time I read it, I realized I had a voice, it was my voice, it was getting better and better. And then people, you know, I sold those movies, and then he kept building them. And it was very inspiring to think about that take of like, he just didn't give up. And he just totally looked no, at Quentin, the work and he found his he found his own value in his own work improving even I mean, without the external it. you know it's a it's a fantastic story it's like one of those classic you know hollywood or entrepreneur stories he's working at a video store for years and you know he would start rec he was uh, making his own movie and he would uh, film on the weekends and then mm -hmm. you know he, he made a few hundred dollars every week basically and then he would rent the equipment on a friday because then they would only charge him for one day because it was the weekend. So he could basically record the entire weekend. And so he'd go off and record and, and then he'd have to go back to work. And he started making this movie, you know, one weekend at a time for like two or three years. And then he finally put the, he didn't even have the money to get the film developed. So finally, after three years, he gets the film developed and he's like, unfortunately it sucked. It wasn't what he was expecting. But during that time, uh, he wrote True Romance, which then got bought. He sold that screenplay that gave him a little bit of money. Then he wrote Reservoir Dogs and then he met Lawrence Bender and, you know, Bender went out, read the script. and was like, holy shit, this is amazing. They raised the you know, million or so bucks to make the movie. And then that kind of launched everything. And uh, yeah, it's, it's one of these, you know, amazing rags to, to riches stories. Um, you know, they're kind of rare and or they're more rare in Hollywood. They occur all the time in the tech industry. We well, see them you know, all that's the such time. an interesting point. He said. Uh, they're like, you would never let you make that movie now. And, you know, in another conversation, I think I listened to three podcasts with him, uh, Joe Rogan, Brady Stanellis, and then Brian Koppelman's and all three of them are tremendous. But uh, I think in the Brady Stanellis in, in the Joe Rogan one, he's like, Oh, they would never let you make that movie. And he was like, bullshit. You can just make it. I just made it. I did you not see the last two films and how politically incorrect they were. And, you know, I don't care what Bruce Lee's you know, fans think of how I portray Bruce Lee. He was a he was a bad actor. He was a terrible, you know, human being to these folks. And he his basic thing was everybody keeps waiting to ask for permission. And he's like, I'm just going to make my movies and uh, let the chips fall where they may. I'm not going to be censored. I'm not going to censor myself. And I'll make my 10 movies. And that's it. Game over. I'm going to tell a Jared Richard Richard story. I want to tell this uh, poker story. Can I give one last thought on Tarantino? Yeah, 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 yeah. You tell your story. Tarantino's success with Reservoir Dogs, I think it came out in 1991. Um, that really inspired me to want to make movies um, because I saw that somebody could make a movie outside the system for so little money. And that's why I made Think for Smoking. Yeah. Um, and we have another, we have another mo independent movie coming out next year about Salvador Dali, which you know finally got made after about 15 years. So um, yeah, I mean, he's inspired a lot of people and it, it, he shows what can be done. Uh, this is a rags to riches story that involves Jake Count. So uh, I get invited, <laughs> I get invited to the Harvard Business School to give a speech. Oh, First and last great. time I was invited because I was disinvited, Jason, after that, what happened? But well, the, the back two rows walked out in the first five minutes. <laughs> wow. It's <laughs> it was fucking incredible. It was incredible. <laughs> I, we, I get invited to do this thing. Obviously, it's in Boston. It's in wintertime, right, Jacob? Yeah, it was, it was winter and it was Boston. Winter. It's like not a great trip. So, Sachs, you know, I was like, okay, Jacob, what are we going to do to spice this trip up? And we invite Big Al. Oh. Okay. And uh, we get on the plane and Big Al says, oh, you want to play a little poker? I said, absolutely. And I turned to Jacob and I said, Jason, do you want to play? He's like, eh. I said, you know, you guys can play against each other. 
And I said, Jason, why don't you deal? He's like, I'm not interested in dealing. And I said, Jake, I'll, I'll give you 10% of whatever I win. I was like, shuffle up. <laughs> shuffle up and deal. <laughs> <laughs> he deals the game for fucking six hours from LA Chinese where we were. Poker. Chinese poker to Boston. I smashed Big Al. I smashed Big Al. Smash. Uh, sm- I smashed him. And uh, then we go into the thing. We have like a, a nice dinner, blah, blah, blah. We go out. We have the thing at, 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 the, at Harvard where I said something like, you know, I think an MBA is basically worthless. It's just not a good use of your time. I think you should be out building things. The black two rows walked out. They were completely offended. And uh, I did the speech. It doesn't matter. I kept back on the plane and we're flying back. And uh, at some point I realized, I said, Jason, what's the tally? And Jason says, I'm up 40,000. And I said, excuse me, you're up for, and it turned out that I was fucking smashing him. Smashing. Smashing. Anyways, the long story short of it was that we circled for a few times and then we finally landed and Jake Cal won $55,000. But that's so you got to play circling so you could win more. I so can't can't get that. Here's what you don't know. Threw the pack of cards at Jason and said, I she never want to I never want to see you ever again. I never want to have you fucking play poker ever again. the truth is I went to the pilots and I told them, I'll give you five grand if you can make this flight last another hour. <laughs> and they were like, yeah, we got a circle. They got, <laughs> and we just kept circling. <laughs> so it was an for an hour. I was like, I got to get another hour in. He lost $550,000 on a fucking stupid trip. He never even wanted to come. He didn't want to go. Came. He didn't want to go. And then we go, go to the best Michelin star restaurant in Boston. Oh my God. In Boston. And it's so fucking stuffy, by the way. And it's so stuffy. And so stuffy. They take themselves so, so seriously. And they're trying to, you know, bring, you know, 18 courses to us. And, you know, Big Al's a big guy. He's called Big Al for a reason. I mean, he's, he's a <laughs> linebacker. And they say to Big Al, he's like, I'll take the steak. I want a steak. What do you a got? Steak. He's like, you oh, steak. there's, there's a steak included in the prefix. You should do the tasting menu. It's like, oh, yeah, tasting menu. Fuck it. Let's go. <laughs> I'll put more truffles on. It's like, it's not truffle season. Sorry. He's like, okay, well, make it truffle season. Anyway, <laughs> he, they start bringing the food. And he, he wants to eat a steak. And they bring him. I kid you, know you one not. You know those funny scenes in a movie where, like, they pull the the tin and it's like a like a small piece of meat that's like <laughs> giant plate, <laughs> like, giant <laughs> Schaefer comes a, flying off. A that. piece of a piece of parsley, and that's it. <laughs> the steak was the size of a pack of Wrigley's gum. I am not kidding. <laughs> they took like a beautiful steak and they just made a little rectangle out of it. He takes his fork. He puts it on and he holds it up to the woman. He goes, where's my steak? And he puts the whole steak in his mouth. He's like, one bite. She goes, sir, that was your steak. He's like, I want a steak. I'm he starts hungry. screaming, I want a steak. I want a steak. <laughs> the whole restaurant's turned around. He's like, I ordered a steak. This is not if you a steak. Ask him, if you ask him about this trip, he's like, I lost so much money. Yeah. He's like, I didn't eat. It was cold in Boston. It was cold. It's like, it was the worst trip ever. It was a horrible trip ever. And he... It's like, the woman's like, well, how can we make you happy? He's like, bring me a steak. They're like, well, sir, we, ha- we gave you a steak. Po- the steak came. Jake, how, like, many steaks, how many steaks are you going to afford now that uh, Robin Hood just went oh, public? Congrats, yeah, for Jake. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, it's right now it's my third biggest win, uh, Ubercom and then this one. And, you know, time and market. I, I think Robin Hood going out of $30 billion, there's a chance this could go 10, 20, 30x from here. I think it could be a trillion dollar company someday. 22 million members, even through all the craziness that we talked about on this podcast. Uh, you know, they're learning, they're fixing things and 22 million people using the product and they're going to launch so many other products as part of it. And all these young people getting financially literate. I know it's a double edged sword, but I kind of feel like this generation no, on balance. It's 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 better on balance. It's important. I mean, can you imagine if we were in our 20s trading derivatives and options and, and just trading stocks all day? I wanted to do that. But it was too hard. You had to get a broker. It was $35 a trade when I started trading and you had to call Charles Schwab and put it in order. It of all the things of all the things I could have done online in my 20s and 30s, uh, trading stocks w- didn't end up being high on the list. But you did play a lot of cards. Maybe you should have. I, I mean, play a lot of cards. Right, but th- that's what these kids are doing. Like for them, this is, you know, in the same zone, a lot of them as sports betting, wagering, playing poker for money. They're, they're learning. I don't know how you feel Sounds about like it, a great David. It's investment strategy. Well, I mean, if you make a lot of mistakes early in your career when you're making $100 bets or buying a tenth of a stock, 
you know, it's true. small stakes and you're going to learn a hell of a lot. So I, I think the education part That's is true. you can only learn by doing right, Sax. I mean, you just really yeah. can't learn in a, in a, in a thing. Okay. Listen, there's been an amazing episode, even without Freeberg. Uh, we miss you Freeberg. Come back next week. Uh, let the conspiracy theories abound but freeberg just was busy he couldn't make it and we all wanted to we missed each other so we wanted to see our besties we love you freeberg and we love you freeberg we love you freeberg back at you freeberg back at you freeberg (laughs) and we'll see you all next time on the all in podcast bye bye we'll let your winners ride rain man david sack and it said we open source it to the fans and they've just gone crazy with it love you west ice queen of quinoa Where did you get merch? I'm going all in.